Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by that Kelty Guy videos here on YouTube. And uh, I always appreciate you stopping by and today we're gonna show you how to do my version of a skip trowel. And it's gonna be similar to what's gonna, I'm gonna show you right here in this picture. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. I mean, actually there's many different ways because it's a hand applied texture. And when you hand apply anything Everybody does it a little bit different, but my uh, version of the texture is really popular. So we're going to show you how to do that. Although today it's going to be a little bit different because we're actually doing the texture over an existing orange peel texture that's fairly coarse, but it'll still look good as you'll see in this picture right here. Now, uh, I'm gonna answer a quick question though, right quick. It, and you can skip ahead if you don't wanna hear this, maybe you know the answer, but I keep getting asked why I wear a kilt. Is this a gimmick? Is it a cute little thing or is this a skirt, whatever? No, actually this is a kilt. Uh, this one is actually a 501 tactical kilt. And I actually wear kilts like 98% of the time. It's very comfortable. Think about it guys and gals, it's very freeing. We don't wear anything underneath. And uh, it's mostly a comfort thing for me. So it's not a gimmick, it's not a, a cutesy little thing. I wear these all the time. The only time I wear anything else is when I'm dressing up or uh, maybe in the winter time, I'll sometimes wear pants. And uh, is it a skirt? No, it's not a skirt, but you know what? So what if it is a, a skirt and a kilt really are about the same thing. I have been known to wear a skirt. It's just a piece of clothing, just a piece of cloth around your body. Now let's get back to the subject here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is show you how to texture this wall. And because this one had a previous texture on it, and we're gonna go right over the top of it, which you actually can, you can go over most any texture. First thing you really wanna do is knock off all the bumps. You can see all these white spots on here. Those are actually the texture that I scraped off and that helps your knife not chatter and you don't have to put your texture on so thick. Now you can do it a couple different ways. This way is noisy, but you can take your knife and just scrape it. Sometime if you flip it, it scrapes a whole lot better one way than it does the other because you normally want to have a slight curve to these. So I'm actually scraping with it backwards from the way that I coat with it. But you can also just take and sand it. In this case, I've got a, a nine inch radius sander with some 80 grit sandpaper on here, so it's fairly aggressive. I went over all the walls. It knocks off all those peaks, stops your knife from chattering when you're texturing, and it just makes it so you don't have to put so much mud on. Okay. I guess let's move on to the next step here, which is, of course, applying a texture. We've got eight foot walls here. I happen to be six foot two, so I can reach these, as you can see there. But as a pro, we have a secret way to get up there that's a whole lot easier. And it looks like this. This is called, um, they, these are called stilts, obviously. Uh, often drywallers are the most common people that use them, but I've seen some insulators and a few other people use them. These make it a whole lot easier to work on these higher areas. So you can do this or ladders, but I'm gonna do, off, do it off of stilts today. And I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit just to make sure you can see everything I'm doing. Okay, and again, this is a texture that you can do about any way you want, but I see a lot of people try and do it and it comes out pretty rough and pretty, um, not, not so pretty actually. So do it how you want, but I'm gonna give you some pointers here how to do it the way I'm showing here. What we're gonna use today is a 12 inch mud knife. This one's stainless steel in case you wonder. And uh, of course you gotta have a 13 inch pan to fit it into. You can do it with a 10 inch knife. I really wouldn't recommend going any smaller uh, because that's often when it gets into the ugly zone. You just can't float mud out smoothly and make it look good with those smaller knives. So all we do with my method is load up our knife, 
with a nice, uh, with a nice scoop of mud here. And then I prefer to band all the edges, so I'm gonna show you what I mean. Okay, basically I coat all of the edge with a layer of mud like that. And the reason is if you don't, when you get done, you end up with all these little voids here and it just looks like something got missed. And you, you might think this is gonna look like a smeared mess. It actually makes it look a lot better. So try this method rather than leaving it voided. But um, one thing I forgot to mention is I'm using a mud called Plus 3. I've mentioned this in other videos. It's my favorite. It's an all-purpose lightweight mud. It's very smooth feeling. It goes on easy. It's easy to sand and it's lightweight, which makes it easier on your arms and shoulders. You do usually want to mix or thin this down out of the bucket because it often comes out too thick, but it comes out different thicknesses for everybody. So you just kind of have to play with it, but you can see here, it's got a little th thinness to it, but if you get too thin, you're gonna constantly be dealing with drips like that. And you're just gonna make a mess of yourself, your wall, everything around you. So don't get it too thin, but if you get it too thick, you're gonna work your butt off putting this on. So once you get that banded edge loaded up again, don't get too heavy because you end up just smearing um, You'll, you'll, if I do it, I'm gonna mess up my wall, so it's hard to describe, but you'll just get a big smear and you're trying to get a skip trowel, but don't put too thin or you won't get anywhere. So here's how I've loaded it up. And you just start by basically, like the name sounds, skip it on the wall. So you're just kind of putting some light pressure and let me show you quickly how I do it normally. Okay, so you can see I just kind of go in this random pattern. I'm often swirling, but I like to break those swirls up so that I don't end up with too much of, of these constant circles everywhere. So the way you break it up is you can just change like that. I just kind of swirled back into it. You can come back after and pull and change. See how it's changing the shape. So there's a lot of different ways, but I try and leave spaces no bigger than this and just go along. We'll go slower now. and kind of create a bunch of voids. And if you start getting a thick spot, you just pull it out a little bit and thin it out. And if you get too big of an opening, you just cut it off kind of randomly. And you wanna try and keep your open areas random looking. You don't want them to start looking like all the same shape all the time. So, after you get it on like that, and here we're putting it on just heavy enough to cover this texture, you can put it on thinner. Uh, again, I would really recommend experimenting. You can always put it on, sand it off when it's dry or wipe it off when it's wet, but play with it. Now it looks really crude here, and actually I see an area I think that's got too much open into it, so I'm gonna lay a little more right in there. Now, I usually do about Oh, roughly 20 to 30 square feet at a time because I like to let it set up a little bit because if you do this next step too quick it just smears it more and I don't want to so this next step is you just lightly you can see my knife is almost flat with the wall and it's just like two hairs and some air as Bob Ross used to say you go over it real lightly 
and this knocks down some of the defects, the rough spots. And then after you've done the whole surface, you now, if you did it like that, you have a overlap lap mark here and they're all this straight, consistent lap marks. You don't want that. You want this to look more random. So I try and break it up at this point with a little different action here. Just oh, get in front of the camera. So whatever, again, whatever works, once you just kind of break it up a little bit to your satisfaction and you've laid things down, you're good. Now I'm going to show you one more little trick. See if I can go a little bit lower here or, oh, let's see. Okay, let's say this one right here. Let's say you see this spot and it just doesn't look right, but you wiped it down this way for the final kind of knockdown phase. Try going across it the other way and notice the shape of it here. If you put just a little pressure, you can change that shape just by pulling your knife across it. So if you see a shape that looks too um, geometric, too triangular, circular, whatever it is, just go across it, pull a little bit of mud into it, and that breaks it up. Well, that's basically it. Once you're done with this texture, you just let it dry, prime it, and paint it. Although if you want a smoother looking texture, you can put some like uh, 180, 220 grit on here and lightly sand it and it'll knock down a lot of these lap marks and you'll get a smoother texture. If you want a rougher texture, well, simply put it on rougher. You can do that kind of look. That's a popular look in a lot of homes I see where it's actually really skipped on to create a really rough Southwestern look. So again, Play with your knife, your tools, your equipment, thickness of your mud, experiment, get it the way you want. For us, this is the way we want it. And I will point out that one, this always looks spl uh, splotchy until it's painted. I've even had customers come in and, and kind of gasp and go, boy, I don't know if I'm going to like that. And then once they saw it painted, they fell in love with it. So don't worry too much about that splotchy look. It's hard to imagine what it's going to look like until it's painted, but this will look like this. Once it's painted, if you were to paint it that color, it's going to look like that. So it evens it out a lot. Of course, in this photo I just showed you, I purposely side lit it to make the texture more dramatic. So actually, normally it's even less dramatic than that. Okay guys, I wanna show you a few more tricks about texturing. Let's just say you have to stop in the middle of texturing a wall. Like yesterday it got late, it was seven o'clock when I finished texturing down to here off the stilts. So I left an edge that's gonna dry overnight. Well, to blend that, there's a few tricks. First, I would take your sander and go over it real lightly to make sure you knock down any high spots on the edges. And then what you want to do to blend into it is as you texture into it, maybe pull a little bit of mud, a little bit extra into it, and just use that bottom edge to create your shapes. Okay, so, and I band corners too, like I talked about in the inside corners. So now let's say you've got all that on there. If you just go back and go over it like this, you're gonna have distinctive edges all along here, which could give away your blend line. And when it's done, you'll suddenly have this row of edges. So what I do is I wipe this top edge a little bit tighter, and that makes it blend into the background better. Now there's not an edge, but it still blends in with the texture. So that's one trick. Another thing you might have to deal with is electrical boxes. If you're working on an existing home, you've got to get around these boxes. What do you do around these? Here's how I handle them. 
Again, I don't like voids going under cover plates and that. I've seen them in my own house, somebody else textured, and it just looked like there was a hole in the wall right there. So I just go around and put a good coat of mud on all the edges like that, and then just blend out in a way. Same, same basic concept. You just blend out in a way. And then the next day, what you do is take a sanding sponge and go around all your electrical boxes, sand them, and knock down any little high spots, any goobers, and it'll make it look a lot better. Now, handling base and, and a door trim like this, the case, same thing. You just do the tight banding all the way around and, and uh, same concept as the upper angles, the inside angles, and so on. Another thing you might look for is as you're going, you may find little defects you wanna fix. Like for example, here's two nail holes. If you didn't putty those before you started, you can get them while you're going. Just think about where you're texturing and see I just went right over that and I fixed it. So if you see any little defects like that, fix them as you go. Another thing I wanted to point out is to me, and I've studied a lot of textures and tried to determine what looks good and what looks bad. And one of the things that I think looks bad is if you do something like, like this, if you leave really long skinny spots and it just doesn't look as good overall. So if you happen to do one like that, you can just take a little bit of the mud, pull it up through here, connect it. You just broke that up and now it's gonna look a lot better. So that's one way to break up those long skinny areas so they, they don't look like a void. And again, if you got one that you think's too big, even with very little mud on your knife, you can pull a little bit more mud into it and just keep changing the shape. So you can modify it as you go. So when you get done, again, just to recap, take your sanding sponge and go around and I don't know if you can see it on the video here, but I'll, I'll take a picture of it. Just going around doing it, it leaves little bits of mud on the trim and I prefer to just go scrape it off and then take a sanding sponge and lightly sand it and it goes away really easy if you use mud like mine. If you use regular heavy all purpose, it sands a lot harder. This mud I use, this plus three, again, here's a picture of it. It sands really easy and you can practically sand it off with your finger so you can just sand it off. Now, can you mask it ahead of time and keep the mud off of it? Well, yeah, you can. You can see we put masking down here, but all we masked is the face. We didn't mask the top. And the reason is if you mask tight to the wall right here, um, what happens is when you put your mud on, if you get a little bit of thickness in there, then you go to take your tape off, you're liable to peel some of that mud away there and leave this kind of ugly gap. Or the tape will tear and it's hard to get loose and you may actually have to take a razor knife and go along and cut all of your tape, which you can do if you want. But if you use blue tape and do that, you'll see a tiny little blue line appear through there and sometimes that can be a problem. So I prefer to just do minimal masking, keep the tape away from the wall, and then when I'm done, I just clean it up with a sanding sponge and scrape it with a six inch knife and sand it with a sanding sponge and that takes care of it. So after you're done, you just go around and clean up all that stuff. And remember, the one thing about drywall mud is it washes off with just plain water. You don't need any fancy solvents or anything. It can be dry for a week and it washes off really easy. That's the one good thing about drywall mud. So I hope those tips help, help you. But anyway, hey, thanks for stopping by. I hope that helped you out. And if you have any comments or questions, uh, ask me. Uh, I'm glad to answer them. If you watch my channel, you'll see I answer the questions and try and give you good advice. And if you have any ideas for videos, I'm open to that also. At the end of my video will be clickable links on your smartphone or tablet and you can click and subscribe, watch other videos, etc. 
tell me if you tried this out and how it worked out for you and if you think it's something that an average homeowner well, hey i had to jump off my stilts and uh today i i didn't show up with my camera so i'm shooting this on my iphone and a dang iphone just jumped right off the tripod somehow it's been sitting there for 15 minutes but anyway in the comments below if you try this out let me know if you think this is something an average homeowner could attempt or not or how difficult you thought it was because honestly my guess is that most of you will find this a little bit tricky to get this kind of look you'll probably get a, a knockdown but you're gonna find it a lot harder than it looks to apply this texture but hey I'm not sure so let me know in the comments until next time we will catch you on the next video and look forward to seeing your comments and subscriptions below thanks a lot Thank you.